Charged with a sense of mission, imbued with moral fervor, many women took their commitment to virtue seriously. If they were to redeem their own men, why not all men? This became the work of many who did not need to earn their keep. The period from 1830 to 1860 in American history is one of moral ferment. We sometimes call it the era of reform, a moment when both men and women underwent a religious awakening, and when women, especially, turned their attention to what they saw as the corruption of a market-oriented society. Men thought that they might serve God by becoming successful industrialists or entrepreneurs. Women had a harder task. They would serve God by monitoring and sustaining moral virtue everywhere. Criticism of women's new aspirations abounded. A woman could operate far more efficiently in promoting the great interests of humanity by supervising her own household than in any other way, wrote one disgruntled critic. Many women disagreed. Women of the middling sort, who had reasonable educations, could read and write and cipher. They had a modicum of free time derived from falling rates of birth, and increasing proportions of household servants. And they had a sense of mission inspired by spiritual commitment. There was much to be done. Married women joined their husbands in missions abroad. Single women found missionary men to marry so that they too could be sent to convert the heathen. Helping the unfortunate, providing homes for orphan children, redeeming the sinner, especially the prostitute, aiding the mentally and physically ill, all these tasks now fell under the purview of women. We remember perhaps Dorothea Dix, who became famous for reforming mental hospitals. We recall Frances Wright and the utopian communities that significant numbers of women joined in order to demonstrate the possibilities of a life that served both God and mankind. But most of all in this period, we remember the huge numbers of women who joined the movement to abolish slavery. In many ways, abolition became a woman's cause.